Now, uh, Alhamdulillah, we are on Lake Victoria, okay. uh, here in Uganda, and uh, we are sailing towards the source of the Nile, that is at Jinja. But one of the important things that have been, uh, uh, one of the important explanations that were, was made to us is that uh, this is one, uh, a freshwater lake. Now, I stated that it is therefore instructive to note that the Quran had already told us that in the world there has always been two bodies of water. One is fresh and sweet in taste and another one is salty and bitter in taste. Now I'm saying that the Quran had already told us that there is fresh water before even geographers discovered it, before even geography was born. So you can, this is part of the miracles of the Quran. Allah has told us in Surah Al-Furqan, that is 20, chapter 25 of the Quran, وَهُوَ الَّذِي مَرَجَ الْبَحَرَيْنِ هَذَا عَذْبٌ فُرَاتٌ وَهَذَا مِلْهٌ أُجَالٌ وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَهُمَا بَرْزَخًا وَهِجْرًا مَهَجُورًا He it is that runs two bodies of water one is fresh and sweet in taste and the other one is salty and bitter in taste and he sets in between them a partition and they never mix i am not saying that here we are on the two bodies of water this is only one body of water fresh water but there are places in the world different places where such phenomenon such natural phenomenon i mean occur where the two bodies of water run side by side and they never intermix. When you go to South Africa, you go to, to Cape Town, um, you, you can take the same kind of tour in Cape Town. They will take you there where the two oceans meet. The Indian Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean meet and they never mix up. You can see the real saying of, of the Quran. And this is just one of the places in, in the world. It's not only one place. Now I stated that what is very important for us to note is that this is another is a miracle of the Quran in the sense that the Prophet ﷺ was born in desert. He lived all his life in desert. There was no story at all that the Prophet ﷺ ever sailed on water or ever traveled on any body of water. He had never had an encounter with a river, not to talk even of an ocean. But then look at the Prophet Sallallahu explaining different bodies of water in the world as if he had traveled, you know, by sea or on, on ocean. Now this confirms that definitely this book is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. It was not revealed by him. It was, it is not the publication or the fabrication of a mortal being. It is from a divine source. Now, for the Prophet ﷺ to explain certain natural phenomena in the world, which are just being discovered in the world today, now this is a confirmation of the fact that he is definitely the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that he definitely received revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now there are a number of examples in this regard. One of them is another verse in Surah to Nur, that is chapter 24, where the Prophet where the Quran gives us very vivid, very vivid description of the ocean where he says, Aukazulumatin fi baharin lujiyin yakshahu mawjun min fawkihi mawjun min fawkihi sahab zulumatun Zulumatin or like layers of darkness. Fi baharin in an ocean, Lujin that is deep. Fi baharin Lujin Yakshahu Mawjun covered by wave of, 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 of water. Min fokihi mawjun covered by another layer of wave. Min fokihi sahab. And again covered by cloud. Zulumatun ba'aduha fawqa ba'adin. Darkness is in layers. To such an extent that 
even if it is you 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 put uh, you bring out your hand your palm in the daytime it is such dark that you cannot even see you cannot even behold your palm now the point i'm trying to say here is that just let let us see how the prophets how the quran describes ocean it's as if typically this verse is describing the atlantic ocean because it has been said that the atlantic ocean is the wildest ocean of all the oceans in the world so the description fits the atlantic ocean but the prophet Salam never even came to africa he never came to lagos or he never came to any of the atlantic source or even even to the mediterranean but look at the description that the quran gives this definitely is a miracle and it confirms the, the truth of the prophethood of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it's a confirmation of the fact that the book is a revelation from God because at that time at that time there were no telescopes with which you would have thought that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had a view with a telescope to see all this natural phenomenon now it means God actually I mean revealed those uh, things to him Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. This is just something for us as a token to take, you know, so that we, we, we benefit from our, our, our visit to this place. And I said earlier in Hausa that one of the purposes, one of the purposes of this kinds of tour, of this kinds of sightseeing, is for a person to increase his iman, his belief in God. Because when you see this kind of things, you know that these were not creatures of these are not man-made and they would not have happened by accident they would not have happened by if this boat we are sailing on didn't come to the to, to, to didn't come up by by accident how would you imagine that this world how intelligibly this world has been you know i mean created with all the intelligent you know the way the world is operating can you imagine that this world would have come by accident? No. It's unimaginable. Yeah. And again, how the world is operating. If you say, if you say it came by accident, would you mean that therefore the world is self-directing, self-controlling, self-referencing? It doesn't have a controller? Certainly since it was created, the creator is the controller, the director of the affairs of the world. Now, this is the purpose for these kinds of sightseeing, mm -hmm. and it has been alluded to in the Quran in Surah Al Ankabut, where Allah says, Travel around in the world. And see how Allah began creation. And Allah has the capacity, the power to originate another creation after this one. So you can see. He is the one that originates creation and he is the one that can repeat it. He can repeat it. So this should increase our faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I think this is the biggest benefit of these kinds of tours. Wallahu ta'ala alam wa salamu alaykum. Professor, I'm going to